Yeah, a lot of people have confused him with me at various times. <laughs> they have? Huh? Terry Spurgeon? <laughs> I try to say, no, 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 I didn't say that. That was Charles Spurgeon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because you say such... <laughs> the, the depth <laughs> yeah. is very similar. Live your life with purpose, change someone's life for the better, and leave a lasting impact on those around you. Welcome to Finish Strong, the podcast designed to help you discover your unique purpose and develop a plan to leave a powerful legacy. Dan, Brian, and Terry are ready, so let's get started. Many of us have suffered the loss of a loved one. We may have prayed with everything we had, all the faith we could muster that they would be healed, but it didn't happen at least not in the way we had hoped. Maybe this has happened to you and you find yourself asking, does God still heal? That's the topic of today's Finish Strong. I'm joined by Brian Rowland and Terry Steen. I'm your host, Dan Wheeler. We're gonna do our best to answer that question. You know, I recently lost my sister, Mary Jane, and I went through a really hard time. She suffered a serious stroke And within a week, she was gone to heaven. It was one of those things that came out of the blue. But for that week, I believed with all my heart, God was going to heal her. My whole family did. We did, we FaceTimed with someone in the room so she could hear our voices as we prayed. But he chose, God chose to ultimately take her to heaven for the ultimate healing. Guys, I mean, there's so many questions when it comes to healing. Does God... Does God not heal sometimes because we have a lack of faith? Does he not heal because he needs to do something through the pain, through the suffering? Is it because we don't ask right? Do we we don't command the sickness right? I mean, you know, there are some people that believe you have to do things in a certain way and God won't or God won't heal. And I'm not sure I go along with that. What are your thoughts? Well, it's quite a topic, that's for sure. And maybe at the end of the 25 minutes, we won't have answered too much. But I think the short answer for me is, we don't know. That's the bottom line is, we don't know. But but it's Mm -hmm. so intriguing to discuss and think about because there's so much in the Bible. Jesus has given us so many examples, so many promises about healing. And that, so to me, that's what's very interesting. Brian, what's your short answer on that? Why sometimes it seems that God heals and other times he chooses, well, he chooses to heal by taking someone home to heaven. Yep. And a lot of that, Dan, I tell you, I, th- I think that, and I believe that um, a lot of it is in our faith. I think that's one thing. I mean, because you see in the Bible where people, God changed his mind. Look at uh, King Hezekiah. I mean, he changed his mind. And, and extended his days. And there's times when they do that, but I, I, it, it comes down to when it says, have no doubt, <laughs> you know, how, how, how many of us have no doubt? I mean, all of us have some kind of doubt someplace. And, and, and then I look at it as what we want, not what God wants. We're not praying for what God wants and what his will is. We're praying for what we want. And we want it for selfish reasons. It's for love because we love the people, but it's a, uh, it's, it might not be what God wants. And we find out in the Bible, too, that many have suffered. We'll talk about that later and how they've gone on. And um, But that's my short answer to that. Terry, you said something so interesting to me because I was staying at your house when I was going through all this with my sister. And, and we were talking about, you know, you just pray, you believe with all you've got. And yet the Bible says it only takes you know, the size of a, the faith of a, the seed of a mustard, size of yeah. a mustard seed. That, right, that's right. not a lot. But but you said, and, and don't you sometimes wonder why, if God knows what he's going to do, why do we pray? Although Brian just said, God, in scripture, his mind was changed because of prayer. Yeah, and, and that's a tough thing. Because when you, you can look to, well, even the disciples, when you talk about lack of faith, If you'll remember the disciples, Jesus wasn't with them, and they were healing some of the people, but they came across this boy who had seizures and was demonically oppressed or possessed, and they couldn't heal him. And Jesus came along, and the father came to Jesus and said, hey, my son needs healing. Your disciples couldn't do it, and Jesus then healed them. And so the disciples later said, well, why couldn't we do it? And he said... 
because of your unbelief. So there is an element of faith, obviously, that has to go into that. But I think too many times, just like you with your sister, just like me in different circumstances, I had a, uh, a great, great friend of mine, Mike McGovern, whose wife passed away a number of years ago, and we prayed so fervently for her. I've never seen more faith in a guy than I saw in Mike during that time as his wife slowly declined. Even on the deathbed, she, she was at home and she passed away, and he still believed God was going to raise her up from the dead again. I mean, his faith was so yeah. strong, and it didn't happen. So, so like you're saying, well, why, why would we keep praying if God already knows what's going to happen? But then, but then Brian made the comment about King Hezekiah. We know so many places in Scripture that God moves based on our faith, and on our prayers. And no matter the results, we have to stand on that faith and stand on the on what he tells us. That's true. I remember when Beth passed, I, I remember kissing her on the cheek and getting up and walking out of the room with my daughters. And my prayer was, God, I don't understand, but I'm still going to love you. And, and Brian David did that when he was praying for his son. Right. When they told him he had passed, I mean, he prayed fervently, but they said, okay. He got up, washed his face, and he went on. You have to go on mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. You know, and when David did that too, I mean, he was, he was laid out face down on the floor. I mean, for, you know, days down there, he was just praying through his, uh, for his son's healing. But, you know, God had said that he was going to take his son, and he did. I mean, there, there was a price to pay that he... Hmm for past sins that he was committed, but like God, God had warned him before. So you look at this and you see what David did. As soon as he was told his son was passed, what he got up and brushed himself off. The servants couldn't believe it. Like, what, what are you doing? And he said, well, that's God. He's, he's given me this answer, you know, and mm -hmm. he accepted it for what it was and went on. And how many of us go to that extent? He went six to seven days without eating. Right. Prostate before the Lord. And still got that answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we've so far, we've determined that, you know, we don't understand sometimes why some are healed and some aren't. Sometimes it can be because of a lack of faith that with the story you cited, Terry, with the disciples, when Jesus said these come out by prayer and fasting. And obviously, you know, the disciples were doing something wrong there. But Brian, have some actually been healed? I guess I'd ask all of us, have, have you ever seen someone healed? Well, you, it, obviously in the Bible, we read about healings all the time, but today's day and age, have we seen people be healed? And I, I can say, yes, I have. I mean, I have seen people be healed. There's two that I can tell you right off the top. And one is a, a, a guy that I was growing up with in the 50s, back when we were just little kids, when polio was the big disease and he had polio. And I remember him in a wheelchair. And then I remember him walking after that. And I says to my mom, what, what happened? What happened? And she says, God healed him. He prayed for him, got over him, and God healed him. And I, I, of course, as a kid that was, you know, before I was even 10 years old, I mean, that my eyes were wide open, like, wow, that has really happened. And the second one was my sister. And I told you guys about this before. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She was in her, the second stage, progressing to the third, which is the fatal stage. And um, she was already dragging her leg, and she was they, they were visiting our house, my, my place, I'm sorry, in my apartment in Missouri, uh, right after I graduated, and I was working at the local TV station there, and they came down for Thanksgiving because my father had just passed away in that August. And my mom knew something was up, and she, she figured it out because her brother, uh, my Uncle Louie, had died from MS. So after Thanksgiving dinner, or it was maybe the night before, my brother-in-law said to, to Sherry, she goes, you, you, we have to tell him. And she said, I, I can't, I don't want to, you know? And he goes, no, we have to tell him. And me, I'm thinking she's pregnant again. You know, I saw him carry her up the stairs in the department. I had no idea. I was, you know, my heads were always in the clouds anyways, but my mom was just looking. I could see her at the end of the table and she was just looking at my sister at the other end and my brother-in-law across from each other. 
And she says, I have a disease and it's incurable. And she said, I have MS. And my heart went to my throat. And first thing I thought of was Uncle Louie. And I turned to look at my mom and she was going down. And my brother-in-law caught her. And she was just, she just lost, lost it right there. She couldn't breathe. But then when she got her composure, she said, okay. She goes, enough. This is enough. We've been through enough. She said, Brian, do you believe God can heal Sherry? I said, yeah. She goes, no, I mean, you have no doubt he's going to heal Sherry. If not, I want you out of the apartment. So mm. the same thing to my brother-in-law. Do you believe or not? I want you out of the apartment. We says, no, we believe it. She says, get me some oil. I brought some olive oil. And she put it on my sister's forehead, and she prayed the house down. You could not help but have no doubt. <laughs> I mean, she prayed and prayed. Mm. And I remember just sitting there just feeling the presence of God all around us. And when she finished, my sister told her that I felt the heat go through the top of my head down to the bottom of my toes. But she wasn't healed instantly. That's the thing. It was like the next time she went back to the doctor, they're saying, well, you're going into remission. And it's, you know, this, it's, we're not seeing something right now, but we're going to test you again. You know, and they tested her again after that. And every time she was going back, she was in remission, in remission until she's been, she's been in remission for over 50 years now. Wow. <laughs> and she had another, she had another baby. I mean, you know, so. Your mom did it the biblical way because we read in James 5, um, 14, it says, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil right, in the name of the Lord. And yep. uh, we've done that <clears throat> with anyone who's been sick in our family. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, isn't it interesting? Because it seems like there were times when Jesus tied the forgiveness of sins with healing. And he said, which is it easier to say, rise up and walk or to say your sins are forgiven? And I find that interesting. That is interesting because look what happened on the cross. He took away sin and he healed. His body was broken and his blood was shed for our healing and for our sins. So those have always gone hand in hand, haven't they? Yeah, so they just have. like we should be able to believe for our salvation, why can't we believe for our healing? Right. You know, too, one thing that, that um, says in Isaiah 57, 1, which is interesting, the righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. And it just shows that God knows what's going on tomorrow and the next day and the next day. We don't. We have no idea what's going on in the heavenlies. What does Satan planning and attack us with? And I remember in college, a friend of mine over at Central Bible College uh, that summer, he was burned on fire for the Lord. He had trouble going up to that time, but he, he got on fire and he was traveling in Iowa and down the highway and a truck came through an intersection and hit him broadside and killed him instantly. And I had a hard time with that. And I asked my pastor about it. And he said, well, obviously Phil was ready and God took him out because you don't know what was going to go on down the road. You know, he had addiction problems. He had other, other problems and he took him out when he was ready. And yeah. so he didn't suffer. Yeah. Pam, uh, my good friend, Pam, you guys know she lost um, a son. Uh, she lost a granddaughter and she pointed that verse out to me, Isaiah 57, one. And I think that is so deep that we don't think about that. And I thought of that with Mary Jane and, and even with Beth, that maybe God took them home because of what was coming. And we look around the world today, and man, it, it's a mess. Sometimes you wonder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, B, you talked about us not understanding. That reminds me of Job. We all know the story of Job, everything he went through, all the loss he had. But beyond all the loss, he was sick as could be. <laughs> he right. was covered with boils. And he argued, and God came and he argued, and they had this big argument. In the 42nd chapter, Job answers the Lord and says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Basically saying, I know you can do everything. If you want to do it, you're going to do it. And you asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, and he's confessing to God now, I've uttered what I did not understand. 
things too wonderful for me, which I do not know. The bottom line, God is a sovereign God. And there are things that we don't know. There are things that we will never know. And there are things that we cannot understand with our little puny <laughs> finite minds. Yep. And over in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, too, it just goes to what you're saying. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. And it's so true because there's many examples in the Bible, too, and people that we know that haven't been healed, but they've gone on to do great things. I think you know one of those yeah. people, Dan. Yeah, uh, Johnny Erickson Tata is a great example of that. I've followed her for years. You guys are well uh, familiar with her story. She had a diving accident when she was 18 or 19 years old, and she became a quadriplegic. And she says uh, when she speaks and in her books that she still to this day believes God is going to heal her. But he's chosen not to for some reason. But when you look at what she's accomplished and how she's inspired other people, she's written 40 books. She paints beautifully with a brush in her mouth because she can't use her arm. She's an international speaker. She runs a huge ministry. There's somebody that you think, man, maybe God did more through her in this state than he could have if she was healthy. Yeah. And it's a it's a it's an amazing story of God's grace and love. And there are many stories like that of people who suffered burns all over their body and tremendous loss, and yet they kept going. And there is, that's a story, an example of God's strength and his grace. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think sometimes I think it may just be how we respond to what God does, whether it's a healing or not a healing. And maybe that's kind of our report card. Maybe that's the lesson God's mm. trying to teach us. Maybe it comes down to how we respond, mm -hmm. how we react, how we trust, how we believe. Do we lose our faith? Do we not lose our faith? Because in the bottom line on that, it builds our character. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and Terry, I mentioned, you know, Johnny Erickson Tata. You know uh, the great theologian Charles Spurgeon. He yeah, a lot of people challenge. have confused him with me at various times. <laughs> and, they have uh, Terry huh? Spurgeon. <laughs> was, yeah, was... I I try to say no, no, no. I didn't say that. That was Charles Spurgeon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because you say such <laughs> the, the depth. Yeah. Is very similar. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. And I apologize if I get over your guys' heads. Brian, sometimes. he thinks the shallow yeah. end is the deep end, but we'll, uh. we'll go along. Okay, well, Terry. If sorry. people don't know about Charles, I mean, he was a phenomenal preacher, phenomenal writer, impacted the world in a great way. But what most people don't know is that he suffered from gout and he had a kidney disease and he went through depression. You know, that the enemy attacks. That surprises me. Yeah. 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 The does. enemy yeah. attacks so hard on those who are doing right. things for the kingdom. And he ended up passing away at 57. Now, does that oh, make any sense? Somebody that had so much to give to the world, so much to build the kingdom of God, and at 57 passes away. Non Christians get healed and live on. There's <laughs> another one that just. We can't understand. It's so like God took him out before he may have known something was come on down the line that he was yeah. aware of. Yeah. He's always going to do that. But, you know, I look, I, I look at the Apostle Paul, and I, I think he's the best example, really, when you, when you know what was going on with Paul. And in, when, in Galatians 4, 13 through 15, it says, As you know, it was because of an illness that I would first preach the gospel to you, even though my illness was a trial to you. You did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcome me as if I were an angel of God and as if Christ Jesus himself. Where, where then is your blessing uh, of me now? I can testify that if you could have done so, you would have torn your eyes out and given them to me. And what I, I like about that scripture is that you think about what he was going through. He had something, nobody, I'm not saying exactly what it is, but most likely it was some kind of an eye disease because he says, recalling uh, the Galatians' love and concern for him at that time. And he said, if you would have done so, you would have torn out your own eyes and given them to me. 
And I think interesting. that's interesting. And, and, I, and when I was doing a little research on Paul at his time, a common ailment in his day was called chronic bacterial con conjunctivitis, which is a reoccurring infection of the lining of the eye that would have made it difficult for him to see and would also make his eyes red and causing them to discharge fluid or mucus affecting his appearance. And he said, oh, even though my illness was a trial to you, I think they have to look at this too, you did not treat me with any contempt or scorn. So there was something embarrassing about Paul's condition that the Galatians overlooked and loved. So mm -hmm. I think that's uh, it's amazing. And if, if you yeah. go on to read through Galatians, he authenticates the letter at the end uh, when he says that uh, he's been dictating to a scribe by adding some things in his own handwriting. He wrote, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own uh, hand, which right. further suggests, you know, he had probably difficulty seeing. But the thing is, is that he did, he did not use that as an excuse. He used that to go, to go on. Uh, look what the affliction I'm having, but I, this is what I've seen. This is what I know. This mm -hmm. is what I'm preaching about the Lord. And over even in Second Corinthians 11.30 says, if I must boast, I will boast of all things that show my weakness. I think that is fantastic. You yeah. would look at it. It's just the opposite of what we would think, you know? Right. And so they, a lot of a lot of people, as we've uh, uh, people of faith, great faith, close to the Lord, have suffered. Yeah. And weren't weren't healed. I wanna we just have a few minutes and I want to just check in with our, our producer. He's a young guy, John Matarazzo. John, what do you think? Has anything is what we are saying, does that ring true with you and your faith about healing? Well, you know, whenever you've experienced healing, and I can think of a couple right off the top of my head where God's used me to pray for people, and I've seen healing. Uh, in Peru, uh, in one night, we had two great healing miracles. Wow. Where there was a lady that had a tumor the size and shape of about an egg um, uh, in, her, in her shoulder, and it was causing her a lot of pain. And a group of myself and a bunch of the Peruvian kids that we were working with, we prayed for her and literally felt the tumor disappear. Mm -hmm. We had another person that night who came to our, came to the park that we were at and she was being carried on a chair and she couldn't walk. But after she was prayed for, she was able to get up and walk and carry her chair back home. Mm -hmm. Those are, that's a night that I'll never forget. I'll bet. And then, I actually had uh, a pastor pray for me because I was having some back problem. And he said, your one leg is shorter than the other. Um, and so my right leg was about uh, three quarters of an inch shorter than my left leg. And he held it in his hands and he was just praying and asking God to, to straighten them, to lengthen the one leg so that they're even. And I literally felt the bone on the inside of my right leg pushing out and then the skin got tighter around it and all of a sudden the skin caught up to it and it was the strangest feeling on the inside. So I totally believe that God does heal. He can heal. He will heal. But sometimes we just don't understand why his timing and his ways are higher than our ways. And that's what I wanted to kind of end on. God does heal yes. because he's a compassionate God and, and we see it throughout scriptures. And you know, one of the stories in Mark 2, 1 through 12, I don't have time to read the whole thing, but when they brought the, the lame man to him, and they let him down through the roof. And, you know, Jesus really took that as a teaching opportunity. And in verse 10, he says, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise Take up thy bed and go thy way. I wonder if he was saying, you know, I'm going to do a miracle here, but the greater miracle is that I can forgive sins. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And he always started with that. When people came to him for healing, he always said, your sins yeah. are forgiven. That was yeah. always his first one. So, you know, we always have a final segment. We say, finish strong with faith that God will see us through our physical challenges. Uh, Terry, it's obvious God heals, and it seems like he wants us to trust him in all things, including matters of healing. Yeah, yeah. I think it all comes down to trust and faith. We have to believe in the goodness of a sovereign God, and God's always there in the storm, whether he heals us or whether we share in the sufferings, as the Bible said, because I think God's more concerned about our character than our comfort, and his power is made perfect in our weakness. Weakness, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Brian, I think that sometimes there's a deeper spiritual thing going on 
Yep. That God sometimes That's answers true. the way we think he will, and sometimes he doesn't. It's yeah. true. And over in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, in the, at the end of the 10th verse, Paul says, for when I am weak, I am strong. And I think that's how we are too. Mm -hmm. In our weakest moment, we can be strong. And when we are, it's because God has given us that strength. I'm going to wrap up with a quick story. When Beth was dying and I was in a hotel downtown Philadelphia and we're getting, I just knew she wasn't responding. Things were not going well. I had a friend of mine, uh, Dr. John Cook, and he had, his daughter was a specialist in what Beth was going through and what was her problem was. And she knew that it was terminal in most cases. And she told John, you have to call Dan and tell him. And he told me, you know, she's probably not going to live. And I said, I know, John, but I have to ask you, you're a medical doctor. Have you ever seen miracles? And he says, well, yes, I have. And I said, well, I'm holding on to that hope. Hmm. So don't, don't destroy my hope because <laughs> yeah. I'm believing. Hmm. And I did. And I know that Beth is ultimately healed. Um, Boy, that's been an interesting discussion. I think I feel like we could do a whole nother podcast on this topic. <laughs> I mean, we've just scratched the surface, but the point is God does heal. He still does it. I mean, John had that great story of what he saw in Peru, and we know he does, but he is still God. We have to have faith. We have to believe and know that he can do it, but sometimes his ultimate healing is taking someone to heaven, and then they are restored forever. I hope that encourages you today. God bless you. This has been another episode of Finish Strong. We appreciate you listening, and we hope you'll join us for the next edition. God bless. Thank you for listening to Finish Strong. For more information about Finish Strong and Fearless Faith, check out their website, ffaith.org. Make sure that you rate and review this podcast to help more people accomplish their God-given purpose so that together we can finish strong.